So we are back today to talk about some nonfiction recommendations. I have been reading a lot more nonfiction over the last couple of years. And so I just thought I would do a video talking about it. I kind of loosely separated these into a few different categories, but I don't know. So let's get into it. I have talked about some of these books before. I mean, I've talked about all of them, I'm sure at some point, but like some I know I've talked about like in even like specific videos, like you'll, I'm going to talk about some that I talked about in an old book memories video where I talked about required reading or like books I read in school. I don't remember. The first category we're going to talk about is the historical slash memoir section. I don't read a lot of memoirs. It's not really my thing, but I have one that I really like, so it goes in here. So let's do that one. Oh no, two memoir -y type books. So first is Scrappy Little Nobody by Anna Kendrick. I read this on audio a few years ago. She reads it. It's very short. I think it's very funny. It's very Anna Kendrick. Um, she is young, but because I think sometimes people think like, oh, if you're young, like you don't have anything to say, which I mean, again, I don't read a lot of memoirs. Sorry for the sun. Murphy is now playing with the blinds and I'm not going to stop him because I may pay the rent on this apartment, but it's his home. He's in charge. Anyways, she started acting from a very young age. I think she was on Broadway when she was like 10 or 11 or something like that. So it is interesting. It's funny. It's an easy light read. It probably has some like not like other girls vibes, but I'm fine with it. Uh, the other is I Know Why the Caged Bird Sings by Maya Angelou. So I will say this wasn't my favorite, but I think this book is a perfect example of why it's hard to rate memoirs in a lot of ways. Um, it's very interesting. I could listen to Maya Angelou read me the phone book. Um, I did listen to this as an audiobook. All, pretty much the majority of my nonfiction I do on audio. Murphy, you're like putting the sun in my eyes. And she reads it herself. Her voice is just beautiful. I think this is very interesting. I think sometimes it was hard to hear because like you hear about things that people went through. I think I've talked about this in a video. Even though like you know stuff happened, it's being kind of reminded about it in a way and also knowing like this really in time did not happen that long ago because I think especially if something happened before you were born, sometimes you think of it as like the away times or the before times. It's kind of like how on TikTok when people say like, the late 1900s and I feel offended because like it's not that long ago you guys we don't mean to call them the late 1900s but that's just because their perspective on time and when something happened is different than mine and mine is different than my parents that kind of thing oh no I do have another one I have uh Frederick Douglass by Frederick Douglass I believe I forgot about this um obviously not narrated by him um this was very good. I do want to read more stuff by Frederick Douglass. Um, I'm a big, big Frederick Douglass fan. I feel like it's hard to like not be if you live in Rochester, New York, like in a non-offensive way. He's like shoved down your throat. Maybe that was just like my elementary school. I don't know. Um, but we definitely, you know, Frederick Douglass, Susan B. Anthony, they have a bridge named after them. Like big, big in the history learning here in Rochester because they're pretty big figures historically and in Rochester. I am a huge fan of, um, it feels weird to say this because I feel like now maybe you'll uh, judge me, but it's fine. Um, I'm a big fan of a slave narrative. Um, I just think, again, it's a really, I read, I can't remember what his name was. I could, wish I could, if I can remember and I can find it, I'll try to link it in the description below. I read a slave narrative and because I kind of consider this like along those lines um in college I had to read a slave narrative for one of my English classes and it was so helpful and insightful and there's a lot of them I need to read more um and it was where slaves or ex-slaves would write their stories um and I think they were published a lot um as part of the pro-abolitionist movement especially in Britain like I think the abolitionist movement was a lot more popular and aggressive maybe in their like advertising uh, in England. Maybe it's just because I took a lot of like English lit classes so I was just exposed to more stuff. I don't know. Um, but I like these because I think that they show you again like this personal experience. I think it's I talked about this in my Anne Frank book memory video. Like you can learn a lot about something 
but once you have that like personal connection and that personal experience it's really helpful it's that one person dies and it's a tragedy and like a million people die and it's a statistic it's one of those things and so I think uh, things like slave narratives are very helpful for that. Uh, similarly is Under a Cruel Star, Star by Hedda Margolius Cavoli. Cavalli. Um, I talked about this I know in one of my book memories videos. I still own it. I just don't know if I could ever reread it. This was, I think they're in Czechos what was Czechoslovakia at the time. And it's about a woman who they're under Nazi rule. Yes. And uh, she talks a lot about her husband and she does ultimately lose her husband and uh, I like it because again it's that personal look at something it's also the a story maybe you're not used to hearing about World War II and Nazis and um, not that any Holocaust story isn't valid I think it is and I think they're important but I think a lot of times we think just of like Germany and we don't think of other countries and other groups of people like it wasn't just Jewish people who were targeted by the Nazis and by Hitler not diminishing what happened to them in any way a lot of groups were targeted as others and whether that was because they were trying to help the Jewish people or they were just another group of people that the Nazis didn't like um, and so I think it's important again to learn about other areas and to just like expand your horizons that's just what I like to do so then um there is again another <clears throat> book I talked about in a book memories video is 1776 by David McCullough I actually have a lot of his books on my uh, wish list at my library and I will read a lot of them at some point because I like his writing style I think it's very accessible it's very narrative like narratively written which is very helpful for me as a traditionally fiction reader. I read this in my American Revolution class in college which was one of my favorite classes and it's so funny because like American history is not my thing. I think I mainly took this because I needed like a 300 level class and I had taken a class on colonial America from this professor and I loved her. I actually looked her up recently. She is still working there so that's awesome um, and so this was a book we read in class. It was so interesting um and I just like I felt like I learned a lot even though at least in America we or like where I grew up we did learn a lot about the American Revolution but this still taught me things obviously that whole class taught me things that professor was amazing if you go to St. Lawrence University and you're looking for a history class Professor Schrems uh, another one is The Moscow Rules by Antonio Mendez. So, um, and I've read, he did one on the Argo story too. I think they're both very interesting. I think they were read by him. Were they read by him? I can't remember. And his wife has done some of those like insider videos where she reacts to like spycraft stuff. Um, and because they were both in the CIA. And this is mainly about Cold War stuff. The Argo one is about Argo. Antonio Mendez was a huge part of that. Um, it's just very interesting and it's obviously something, well, I mean, obviously, I don't know how much you know about me, but that happened all before I was born. I mean, I guess technically not true. I was born in 1988, so technically this, right? Yeah. But anyways, mainly before I was aware of what was going on in the world. I think it's interesting and very interesting to see like what was happening in Spycraft and everything. And like obviously you can watch movies, but I really enjoy this. And I do recommend those videos with his wife. She is very interesting and compel like she's a compelling like, I don't want to say storyteller. Like I don't know if that's the right word, but like she's very good in those videos. Sometimes I think people, they're not camera people, so... Uh, sometimes they can be a little boring maybe but she does a really good job um, and then in maybe more fun historical I feel like this is historical I don't know this video is going a lot longer than I thought it was going to uh, Bill Bryson I've read several stuff from him I didn't love his Shakespeare book but if you know like nothing about Shakespeare you might find it interesting it's very very like just in like intro to Shakespeare information but he has like a brief history of the world he has like one about like a house like how everything in the house like 
came to it be like why houses are set up the way they are and stuff he just has a very good way of telling uh like a story and making it accessible very interesting so next is self-development i know a lot of people don't like self-development or personal development um, i've learned recently it's used a lot in the mlm community and so a lot of people who have gotten out of that community thank god um, have a lot of like negative connotations around it i respect that and i also do think that there is a lot of personal development or self-development books that are um very like basic um I don't necessarily think that's like a bad thing. I think some people, it may come across as like, oh, this is just obvious, you should know this. But you have to learn that somewhere. These are some of my favorites. So one, I've read it like three times by now, and that is Atomic Habits by James Clear. Highly recommend, I've done audio and read it. So good. If you read no other self-development book, read this one. It is so well written, it's so accessible. But he explains to you scientific like this is what i'm looking for in a self-development book he points out problems that you have he gives you solutions he gives you the reason why those solutions should work and i love it and it's all about making small tiny steps atomic habits and building habits and setting habits so you do things because your brain is a pattern recognition person it's like when you have a baby you try to put them on a sleep schedule and you kind of have them like we do like we take a bath and then we put lotion on and we change your diaper and then we read a book and then you go to sleep and that's how your brain works and then your brain just starts to see it as like oh, okay we do this thing it's like if every time every day i wake up i turn i hit snooze my brain is always going to default to hitting snooze putting these like little teeny tiny things to try and like hack your brain almost and it's oh it's so good um next is get your shit together by sarah knight this is not her first book but it's the first book i ever read by her i reread it this year and i think it's still my favorite i think a lot of her books do kind of cover the same concepts so i think honestly you just have to find if sarah knight works for you which she does swear a lot i mean with that title what did you think you just have to find which one speaks to you the best if her books will work for you <laughs> Um, and so for me, that's this one. And she's kind of no nonsense. I feel like I can see why people wouldn't like it and wouldn't like her, but I enjoy it. I listened to the audiobooks. I read this one physically this year too, and I still liked it. Next is Finish by John Acuff, which I actually plan on reading again la next year. This is again about kind of like habits and following through on things and motivation. He also has Start, um, which I have not read yet i plan on reading both next year then we have like the other category so for these i have quiet the power of introverts in a world that can't stop talking by susan kane i read this years ago and i really liked it i had it on audio i think it was recommended on a smart bitches podcast and it really spoke to me and it explained a lot about my personality to me and i remember her talking a lot about how to kind of like parent introverts and stuff like that it if you're an introvert or you like have an introvert in your life that you really care about i would highly recommend checking this out and the last one is what if serious scientific answers to absurd hypothetical questions by randall monroe i need more nonfiction like this like this is the nonfiction i'm like always seeking out and i can't figure out how to find it basic science history um medical stuff but super easy to understand super like bite-sized almost like in like this one i think it was like very short chunky chap like short chapters little short chunks so it was easy to consume and just giving you like random ass information as if you asked a child like a child just asked a bunch of random questions because i am that child still and i just ask questions all the time and so to just have people answer them for me and i have tried i've read some others that were kind of interesting like i read one about poison which i liked but didn't love um one about surgery which again i liked didn't love um but it was along the same vibe 
you have any recommendations leave them below but yes i actually kind of want to reread this maybe i should see if he has more books so those are some of my non-fiction bookish recommendations as i've been reading more non-fiction um if you have any recommendations and you want to leave them in the comments feel free to do so and i will see you next time bye